Okay, and we are live. Good morning, good afternoon, good day. It just depends on where you are and when you are watching or listening to this broadcast. Um, welcome to Lion King Realty Financial Fridays. My name is Claire Lyons Devon. I am the broker owner of Lions Street Realty. Uh, our team provides residential, commercial for small businesses and nonprofits and property management services. So I'm um, so excited that you decided to join us today. Lions Street Realty launched Financial Fridays to help you stay current on those trends that impact your bottom line. And our goal is to provide you with resources, information, and tips to assist you in making the best financial decisions. And our commitment is to maximize your wealth building power now and in the future. So I'm really glad that you tuned in today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, feel free to like and share this video. And um, remember that our guests are here as a resource team. So feel free to ask questions. Um, you can put any questions in the chat and reach out to um, reach out to our guests. So I'm really, really excited to introduce our guest for today, Mr. Gardine Wilson. Hi. Hey, how are you? How are you? Oh, I am excited. <laughs> I am really, really excited because today's topic is just uh, a special one. I'm going to copy your, your comment. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, today's topic is a special one. And I remember, um, well, one, I, I just want to say thank you for coming. You know, um, we have thank this you. ongoing uh, relationship. We had an opportunity to meet. God, it's been, what, one or two years now? Yes, 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 absolutely. Yes, yeah. in the, yes, it was April 2021. 2021, okay, I'm horrible with dates. So, yes, yes, so yeah. Um, going. Mr. Wilson has been a wealth of information uh, related to student loan and student loan debt. And I actually had an opportunity to attend the University of Southern California. And at that time, it was like $40,000 a year to, <laughs> to attend school. And, um, you know, after four years of undergraduate and several years of graduate school, you know, I had a pretty substantial student loan um, debt. And you guys are in for such a treat because uh, at the time I was in school, I, one, I didn't know about the various programs of what you could do to just manage your student loan debt. And Mr. Wilson has done another um, broadcast with us. You can go back to the YouTube station and check that out um, at another time because today we're going to be talking about how you can wipe that debt forever. So I'm like so, so excited because um, student loan forgiveness is a really, really big thing right now. When we went into the pandemic, it kind of got put on hold, you know, for a minute. Um, there's this whole thing about student loan refinancing where you could lower your interest rate and your payment. Um, the thing about the income-driven repayment where you lower your payment. And now we're going to be talking about actual forgiveness, where that whole debt gets wiped. Like, this is a God thing. I'm, you know, so if you're listening to us today, if you are listening to us today, God has put you here for a very special gift, a very special blessing, and I don't want you to miss your blessing. Don't delay on this. Don't procrastinate. Uh, Mr. Wilson is here. He's going to kind of give us the background, the history, the information on how you do it. Do not delay. Today, I'm going to put the, the website in the chat so you have it as well. Um, but don't delay. You want to hop on this as soon as possible. It's not a hoax. It's not a joke. It's the real deal. And you have an opportunity, if you meet the guidelines, to wipe your student loan debt and not have to pay it back. That is huge. It is a huge, huge blessing. But I'm so excited. I'm going to let you jump in here, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Hey, the, the, the sister says, I, I want to receive this blessing. You know, uh, Claire, thank you so much. I have actually um, uh, been in this for a minute. I am looking at this and, and in this, 
So since I, I've, I've actually been following the whole student loan situation since 2018 and watching some of the things going from a legislative side and everything that's actually been going on because uh, as a financial advisor, so many of my clients actually are being denied getting into homes. They're actually delaying marriage. They're actually, you know, putting off having children. You know, when you look at the whole debt to income ratio, uh, some of the people that have actually gotten out and are, you know, looking at this thing as one. And, and, and the interesting thing about some of the credit cards, you know how and when you got cash in your in your in your pocket or in your your uh, purse and you actually are looking at spending that cash, it hurts. It hurts when you're looking at spending the cash. However, when you're actually in the store and you're looking at the same item and you can pull out that plastic and swipe it, it's like, oh, the pain is not as bad, right? Mm -hmm. And so the crazy part about student loans is the student loans have actually been put way, way, way back in the closet. Mm -hmm. They've been in the garage and the file cabinets. It's a way, way, way in the back. And the sad part about it is most of that doesn't come forward until you know they run into somebody like you clara and they want to buy a house and that student loan debt is sitting there and it's jacking up your debt to income yes yes and so yeah, now wow. you yeah that's decreasing what you have the ability to do mm -hmm. and uh at the end of the day i'm going to go into a very brief history on how this whole thing came to be so in 1958 uh russia got in front of us as far as the whole space race and i don't know if anybody's been following what's been happening recently but they've got telescopes now and a lot of what's going on is them actually out into the the frontier and looking for water on some planet somewhere and russia had beat us to the the space race with sputnik back in 1958. so eisenhower actually said listen wait a minute wait a minute we actually need a more educated group of americans who actually are in a position to help us in getting in front of this entire space race. And so the government actually looked at this whole thing about student loan. I mean, you know, student going to college and if you can't afford it, you know, we're going to actually jump in and help you, you know, with uh, getting into college, getting through college. And at that time, college was not that expensive at all. In fact, uh, in that time period, you know, in the mid 60s, you only had about 8% of Americans that were even in college. So at that time, college actually was really something that was, you know, at space exploration in and of itself, right? However, people that were actually coming out, of course, were actually, you know, looking at uh, helping out in science and all of this stuff that was actually going on, which was where education was pretty much focused around that time. Mm -hmm. And then once you actually looked at um, how all of that began to morph, you know, of course, more colleges started popping up and, and you actually had more people, especially during the civil rights movement. And especially for us, a lot of us were actually being denied jobs as foremen and, you know, as, a, you know, um, executive people in jobs the excuse that we continue to get was you don't have the education I don't have okay that degree, yeah. yes and so even when all of that actually came down and the dreams that were actually being deferred on our ends especially as it directly connected to economics it actually pushed a lot of us to get the education one of the things coming out of my household was when you get that education, they can't take it away. Okay. And of course, when you look at our history, you know, again, you know, education is something that, you know, you want to have and you can actually take it and it's portable. So you can take it from one company to the next company and the whole nine. Right. Um, and so, yes, this major component of encouragement that actually had us going into not just from our parents, but the government was also saying, this is a good thing. Come on in get your education. And I don't know about you, Claire, was, you know, getting your education a major emphasis at, in, in your home? Um, yeah, yeah, actually, uh, my parents, I, I was a 
sec second generation. My dad had a high school education, but he actually did quite well as an entrepreneur. Um, and my mom had gone just through like community college. She didn't go any farther than than that. And between um, my siblings, I was the only person who uh, went to undergraduate and graduate school um, college. So yeah, it, it was a new thing. And for a lot of people, you know, the baby boomers who are out there, which I'm one, you know, college is a, a really uh, a new thing. But I don't think the thing that they don't tell you about is the debt associated with going um, to school. Right. And, and uh, a lot of parents, it's one of the questions I'll probably ask you later, are paying for or setting up programs, you know, so that their children can go and they're incurring the debt on behalf of, of you know, their children. Um, I paid my own and, and God bless, I'm out of my student loan debt. Unfortunately, I don't get to take advantage of <laughs> all these things. I had an opportunity to pay it back and I did, but it was a lot. It was a lot. And I remember showing up to campus that first day and I had no clue that I was going to get a bill. And and a little angel came by, I think I've shared this story with you, Gardine, came by and I was sitting outside on the quad crying. <laughs> it's like, what is wrong? And I said, you know, they gave me this bill and I don't have this, you know, I don't have this to pay. <laughs> mm, wow. And he said, can you get the money? And I said, yeah, but not today. He said, write a check. He said, you got a check in the I said, yes. He said, write the check. I was like, are you kidding? He's like, no, write the check. So I wrote a check, went to student aid and did my thing. They didn't cash that check for months. <laughs> wow. Wow. But, you know, I went and, you know, I was able to get through. And then, of course, the bill that you get afterwards is is, is crazy. So talk a little bit about what's happening with um, uh, President Biden and the legislation, because I know he put things on hold for a minute. Mm -hmm. Talk about the new legislation that's in place um, currently. Great, great, great. Thank you for bringing that up, because when you think about it, especially in our households, and I'm speaking, you know, the majority of African-American households, education was something that they knew, okay, you, you, you're you not getting the promotion. We look at economic, how do we move up the ladder? And, and so in that, when you look at parents who didn't necessarily have the education and these children who, of course, you know, uh, late part of the baby boomer side, going into the, you know, the civil rights movement, everything that was actually associated with that. When you look at how this whole student loan situation was set up, I need to be very, very clear about this. Mm -hmm. Going to college is an investment. Yes, it is. The whole system of college is when you graduate from college, your first year salary out of college should actually exceed your entire student loan debt. Wow. That's not the case for most people. Okay. And so in that, when you look at it, it's a 10 year period. The whole thing with student loans is that you should be able to pay 10% on your student loans over a 10 year period. And you should actually have your student loans paid off. Student loans were only supposed to be, you know, 10 year worst case scenario. Now, I'm actually going to give you a very, very uh, difficult uh, statistic to digest. Okay. 20 years mm -hmm. after the average African American graduates from college, they still owe 20 years later, 95% of the student loan debt that they actually had when they graduated. That's so going, yes, yeah, so going back into what you actually, you know, were saying earlier, this is why it's so important for us because what is happening now is that there is a reconciliation that's going on in the Biden administration this fall. And that reconciliation is taking into account the entire um, uh, history of your student loans there's income-based repayment plans, income-driven repayment plans that are actually now being uh, considered where there's been forbearances, where there's been deferments. Those are actually looking to be counted towards 
your student loan payments because it was in the past only payments were counted but now you they're actually taking all of that into account okay because today the student loan situation 1.6 to 1.7 trillion dollars when you look at 69 percent of people that are actually going to college they take out student loans average student loan debt is about thirty thousand dollars however i've actually had some clients that have actually come in husband and wife are 300,000 plus attempting to go to medical or going to law school and they picked up all of that debt and actually haven't again like you said made the money coming out and so in putting it all in perspective student loan debt this debt that we keep in the back of our closet in the file cabinet with all this dust on it is actually second only to mortgages in the household. It is larger than credit card debt. It is larger than auto loan debt. Mm -hmm. Student loan debts are really inadvertently hurting our community and hurting a lot of people in general, right? Mm -hmm. So of course, uh, Cordona, who actually is over the Department of Education and the Biden administration, he had actually talked about this whole $10,000 of forgiveness and he did that on his campaign they're actually all over him now about are you going to move forward some people are actually you know some people in you know his own camp are saying listen we want you to do fifty thousand and uh the advocates on the back end are actually saying listen we want you to do this because it's going to change the entire trajectory it's going to loosen up and a lot of economic opportunities for you know people who've been disadvantaged to invest in this country to actually free up more in terms of economic power in terms of you know purchasing power with homes that argument is gone however however the issue is that almost 60 percent of the student loans that are completely paid off are for people who actually make you know two hundred thousand plus so on the other side you say the doctors dentists attorneys you know your uh people that are computer technology people they're saying well wait a minute how are you actually trying to you know forgive when we've actually paid ours off so now you have this other contingent that's actually saying wait a minute you know how are you actually going to just give a free ride and a free ticket and put it on the american citizens to do all this forgiveness that's why a lot of this stuff has been hemmed up and held up so what has actually happened okay that we need to know what has actually happened that is actually going to help us in the chat i've actually shared um the uh, www.studentaid.gov okay i'm going to um share with you some of the things that have actually happened in that space okay let me see here. We can't um, we can't screen, see your screen. So while you're looking for it, if you could speak to it, that would be oh, great. OK, perfect. Mm -hmm. OK, so in that, when you look at what has actually happened with this whole student loan scenario, this uh, let, let me let me know if you it's uh, coming. It's coming up. Um, you're trying to share your screen. And I put the yes. website on the, um, I put the website on the, um, there we go. All right. We can see it. Okay. So let me see here. Oh, so when you look way. at, yeah, there that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So okay. Let, let me, let me do this here. It went, it went away for a minute. So here we, yeah, here we go. Okay. Let me know. If you yes, I have that. it. Yes, I can. Okay. So when you when you go in here, um, first of all, when you look at what has happened, under managed loans, right? People who actually had worked for nonprofit organizations, mm -hmm. they actually have a window between October of last year and October of this year. This is very, very important. It okay. used to be that you had to have all uh, 10 years that were running consecutive for a nonprofit, right? 
Okay. However, now if you actually had like a 15 to 17 year uh, period where you may have had breaks in between nonprofits, they're putting all of that together to combine for your 10 years for forgiveness. Okay. Does that make sense? So I, I'm trying to get the relationship between the individual and the nonprofit. So if you had, I, I'm, no, I don't understand. Okay, so if you're an individual, great, great. So if you are an individual who has worked for a nonprofit. Oh, you work for a nonprofit, got If you, you worked for a nonprofit organization, okay. okay? It was so, everything with student loans is like, like my um, aunt, she used to do quilts. Mm -hmm. And she would take a patch of fabric here and a patch of fabric here, and she would actually make this beautiful quilt with cotton. But imagine a quilt that's actually got these whole patch, these patches that have holes in them, and you actually trying to cover yourself. Okay. The way that legislatively what's been happening with student loans over the years is somebody actually jumps up and down and is hollering about, oh, this is not good. And so they'll say, okay, we'll create a bill and we'll add this to it. And they say, oh, well, this is bad. They'll say, okay, well, we'll actually put a bill together and we'll add this to the student loan scenario. What is happening now, Claire, going back to what you were saying, is it's amazing, especially for us, primarily because the fact that they're actually now looking at the entire student loan situation. Because when you look at forgiveness of student loans, since 1995, there have only been 32 people in all of the United States who've actually had their student loans forgiven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so even the people who have actually qualified to have their student loans forgiven under the last administration, um, under the Trump administration, a lot of those loans weren't even looked at. They were basically looking at very small things and sending them back. You know, you didn't actually you know, put a comma between lines and you didn't actually have a sentence that would, was, you, you know. Jump it we, back. So, so what are they doing now though? Right. So, so when I, you look at the public service loan forgiveness component now, right? Mm -hmm. Just look at it like this. So if you worked for a nonprofit for three years okay. and then you went into a corporate sector for another two years, okay. and then you went back to that nonprofit for another four to five years, Okay. And then you went to the corporate sector and then you went and actually did. So the combined amount that you've actually done in nonprofit adds up to 10 years. Okay. They're saying, OK, send this form in. And what we're going to do is look at combining all of your uh, years to mm -hmm. combine to 10 for forgiveness. Okay. So, so, so the guideline basically is you have to have worked for 10 years in order to to qualify for forgiveness and in the past if i understand you correctly if you worked for a nonprofit, they weren't counting that time and now they are yeah if in the past it used to be you had to do a combined 10 years straight okay and every year you had to go through a recertification where your hr department had to say she still works here or he still works here and then they'd send that in and then you get counted credit for that year okay. right so the magic number for public student loan forgiveness is actually 120 months or 10 years. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you have to have worked or been employed for 120 months or 10 years. Right. Okay. Got it. Okay. And so in, instead of it being, you know, just straight now, you know, where you had to do a consecutive 10 consistent. years at a co consecutively. I guess is the word. Yeah. What? What? Yes. In, in mm -hmm. fact, what it used to be. Now, there is an exception that says if over a twenty-year period you can actually get us the name of the company you work for, you know, and you know some contact in HR. If we can verify that you were there, and it, you know, it actually collectively makes ten years, you're actually going to qualify for forgiveness. Okay. Great. Okay. okay? You see okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Great. yeah. So some of the people that actually did nonprofit work were actually saying, oh, gosh, you know, um, I couldn't, you know, stand it they there. Got or, they got kicked out because they were doing public service. So now that public service is going to be counted. Yes. It's got all it. that public service of nonprofit organizations and whatnot. And again, when you look at 
people that have worked for nonprofit hospitals, you know, um, government organizations, stuff like that, yeah. you know. And so the next one is the teacher loan forgiveness, which mm -hmm. acts especially if you have teachers that have worked in um, uh, schools that were, you know, free lunch program schools, those teachers actually are in position to actually have student loans forgiven. Now, some of these have been added, right? Closed uh, school discharge. So if you went to a college and your college has closed, you are actually in a position to actually say, listen, I went to this school. I can't, you know, get the records, you know, I, you know, I need to apply to actually have my, you know, my school loan discharge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then when you look at, you know, uh, the Perkins loan cancellation, um, which actually is connected to, uh, you know, if you have Perkins loans, those are being discharged. This one is you're saying per Perkins, P R. What are you saying? Perkins, P R. Yeah. So there was actually a period where there were loans that were Perkins loans. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if a person, when you go under studentaid.gov, okay, mm -hmm. this website, when you go in, everyone who has student loans should actually have an account here. Okay. Okay, if you don't, you have to create an account. The Department of Education will actually have a record here of all of your student loans and all of the student loan servicers that have actually had your loans. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so if you find that you had a, a Perkins loan as part of your student loans, uh -huh. there's a cancellation discharge component associated with that particular okay. type of loan. Okay. okay. So now, I'm, I'm just going to summarize because I want to move us forward. So 10 years consecutively now, doesn't matter if you work nonprofit or in public or private sector, that 10 years is going to count. You just have to um, prove the 120 months, 10 years. If you're a teacher, um, okay. mm -hmm. you, you're part of the forgiveness program. And then if you had a Perkin loan, they're going to forgive that debt as well. Right. And the other thing to keep in mind is that if you went to a school that closed, okay, if you went to a college that is that, no longer. That's no longer in existence exactly gotcha okay and, and you're still paying on that student loan there's an option to actually get that loan discharged gotcha okay so okay if the, if the college is no longer there then they'll wipe that debt yes okay got it okay, okay. Awesome. So, so when we when we initially talked about this in april a number of these opportunities to discharge a loan have actually come forward Okay. That's why I'm so excited to share this information. It, it, it's really sad that this is not, you know, top of the news, you know, nightly news, or that you actually see this on, you know, CNBC is top of the news. This is what you need to do, primarily because every individual who has a student loan needs to now dig that out the closet and actually diligently attack getting your student loan wiped out. I cannot emphasize that enough. We I'm only not have a sh go ahead. I, I have a I have a question here. So yes. uh, the question is that um, the, their student loans. This is Andrea. She's saying her student loans will be forgiven in twelve months um, because they've combined all of the payments. So what happens to the balance, and does she have to pay taxes on that? Great question. Great question. So in twelve months, she's saying that she is actually going to have her student loans forgiven. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she, is that because she's in an income debt repayment plan? Um, Andrea, if you could type here in an income debt repayment plan, that would be great. Um, she said it's because they've combined all of her payments, but she's asking what happens to the balance. Okay. So great. Okay. So what will the balance, right? In the Corona, uh, relief plan that actually happened at the last minute they were able to put a provision in for the uh this was actually when biden came in this was the third remember people they got the third stimulus check <clears throat> yeah. 
So that third stimulus check, they were able to put in a provision that said, if your student loan is forgiven, you don't have to pay any taxes on that. In the past, whatever you actually had forgiven or discharged, you know, it's like if you make an agreement with a, uh, a debt that you had on a car and they say, well, we're going to just accept the payoff. And what they do is send you a 1099-C that said you had to count the amount that was forgiven as income. In this particular case, to answer Andrea's question, no, that is actually forgiven. It's a tax-free scenario, so you don't have to worry about that coming up. You know, that, hallelujah. That is huge. That might be what I'm saying. Woo -hoo! <laughs> so what you're saying is if your student loan debt is forgiven, you don't have to pay taxes on that money. You do, you do not have to count that as income, nor do you have to pay taxes on it. Okay. Is that in writing somewhere? Yes. Well, it's actually in, in the bill. The bill that actually was put, that last bill, uh, the Corona relief bill that Biden then put in right after he got in office. Because remember, there were two that were under Trump. And then the one, when Biden got in, uh, shortly after January, they actually had another relief bill that actually came into effect in 2021. Well, in, in that particular uh, bill that became, you know, law for the distribution, because they had to vote on it in order for the money to be printed for the stimulus. Mm -hmm. Inside of that bill is a provision that actually says if a student loan debt is discharged or forgiven, no taxes are actually owed on that. It's awesome. in, inside of it's legal, it's law. Awesome. So um, what other guidelines are there for people to qualify for a student loan? forgiveness perfect okay so some of this has been happening up under the radar and <clears throat> the next one that i want to talk about is people who have a disability okay so if you have a total or permanent disability mm -hmm. you're eligible to get your entire student loan discharged okay, okay? and i want to say there was 400 and some odd thousand people that mm -hmm. actually applied for this and they wiped out those loans for people that were actually on total disability that were struggling with student loans okay mm -hmm. the next one is that if you actually are a parent mm -hmm. and the uh, child died there is a discharge due to death okay okay so if the son died um, and the loan was actually for the son's education or the daughter there is a discharge that's actually connected due to death. Okay. Or for example, if the mother actually took out the loan uh, on behalf of the child that she was responsible for that student loan debt, that actually is being discharged. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. The if other one. You disability, if you have a disability, mm -hmm. permanent or partial, then you can prove that they'll discharge your debt. Um, well, if it, Yes, if you have this total or permanent disability. So basically... Oh, oh, total or permanent, excuse me. Right. Thank you. Like, yeah, and so in that, an individual who um, is, of course, getting Social Security disability, right? Mm -hmm. You know, in that, if you've actually been deemed to, to be, you know, uh, permanently disabled, mm -hmm. then you're eligible for discharge of your student yeah. debt. Awesome. And if okay. you're a parent and your um, child um, passes away, mm -hmm. then you can discharge uh, the debt that's associated with your student loan. Right. And vice versa, mm -hmm. if, the, if the parent took out, because right now, Clara, over 25% of all student loans that are making up this, this, uh, this $1.7 trillion amount, there's $96 billion of student loans that actually are taken out by parents for their children to go to college. Yeah, so if the parent dies, because a lot of people lost parents during COVID mm -hmm. and they were paying that student loan debt still for the child, is that debt white? That is correct. Okay. You're looking at Dis that. I'm saying white, but discharge, I guess. That's discharge, that is correct. That's the proper term. Okay, wow. Okay, okay. No. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things when we were when we were doing the seminar uh, with Dr. Soares, Dr. Soares actually was, he said this very eloquently, and he was like, your student loan will actually follow you through college, 
through marriage, through having children, <laughs> through death, and your student loan will sit on the pew at your funeral. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one of the provisions was that student loans could not be discharged even if you filed bankruptcy. Okay. That was in the past. Yes. Now, if you're filing bankruptcy and you have a student loan, including that student loan and showing that even attempting to pay that student loan is going to cause uh, an adverse uh, financial hardship, then that paperwork needs to be submitted when an individual is filing bankruptcy for it to be considered in a discharge. Mm. Okay. That's huge. That hey. is, don't sleep on that one, y'all. That is huge because in the past, you couldn't put your student loan debt in your bankruptcy. Yeah, absolutely you could oh not okay. yes you could not and now you know people that are well most people get an attorney if you have an attorney that's actually filing a bankruptcy for you make sure that they include the student loan you know because in the past old school people would not even consider i mean you know attorneys wouldn't even consider a lot of them don't even know about this particular component that's associated with being able to include your student loans in bankruptcy now. All right. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I hope you guys are taking notes because <laughs> this is a lot. Hey, listen, there are so many ripe fruits that are on this tree. And again, Clara, thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to talk about this because, you know, the thing that even since, and just think about this, this has been since April. Every week, you know, there's been someone calling trying to find out because the information on how do we individually navigate? Mm -hmm. How do we individually navigate? Mm -hmm. You know, it's been the biggest dilemma because it's so confusing, you know, in terms of, you know, who is my loan with? I went to a couple of different schools. I have graduate loans. Mm -hmm. I have undergrad loans. Mm -hmm. I don't know which, which direction to go. Now there is, you know, uh, uh, more concrete direction on what every individual needs to do. This is no one size fits all because everybody has had their own experience with student loans and student loan debt. Now it's our time to pull this stuff out the closet and actually really begin, you know, addressing the situation. I want to go through a couple more uh, okay. before jumping back on. Uh, okay. There is a borrowed defense uh, to repayment. So um, there was a huge lawsuit that actually was uh, put in play by uh, individuals who had taken been given these student loans and really didn't know what was actually going on. And so, um, you know, there's an opportunity to be a part of that class action lawsuit. That's what that is. That really gets into the weeds. False certification is the next one that I want to talk about. The false certification discharge is actually where the schools, and they just recently actually did this with Corinthian College. Corinthian College actually had 105 colleges and they had promised these people going to the schools, if you come to our school, not only will we guarantee you a job, but we'll guarantee you a job making X amount of money, okay? Mm -hmm. In addition to that, some of the schools that actually said that we are a certified, a accredited with the Department of Education, that was false, right? So those schools where individuals have those loans at your ITTs, some of your um, uh, for-profit schools have the opportunity to actually go in and actually file a false certification discharge because they're able to show, look, I was promised going into this field that I would get so much. And keep in mind, student loans is actually an investment. Right. So when you came out, you should actually have only had, you know, you, you should have been making more right. and been able to pay that off over a 10-year period, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the unpaid refund discharge is the other one that um, is actually out there as well. And so um, where that is is connected to if it was that you actually had um, you know, overpaid or you actually had uh, a student loan that got mixed up with what was going on with these servicers, you know, then you, you have the ability to actually have your loan forgiven in that way too.
okay so having said that you know when we look at uh because um I want to yeah, make sure we're, yeah. yeah we're we're rolling on time but that's okay that's okay, okay. so um, i, I, want, I quick, wanted to make sure quick that, question before, yes. before you move on Go ahead. um if people want to see if they're part of the class action suit is there a website that they can go to to find out if they qualify um under the, the class action suit yes a lot of the detail with that information is actually again under the student aid, because under every single one of those tabs, when you go into studentaid.gov and you click on manage loans, mm -hmm. and going under every single one of those hyperlinks gives you more detail into what has been going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, let me actually get to the crust of the crust of the crust. If okay. that was not enough good news, what is actually happening now? Again, if you have been in undergrad the magic number was 240. okay now so in 240 that, is that dollar years so, what 240 what good good question great <laughs> question great question 240 months okay. of payments okay okay so when you look at a public uh loan forgiveness mm -hmm. 10 years government is saying you're helping out you know our community our country be great so in 10 years, that's your number, 120 if you, uh, and, and military actually has the same scenario. You've been in the military, you know, 10 years, you know, you had student loans, you forgive it. Now, for the rest of the people, and especially as I gave the statistic earlier, when you're actually looking at 20 years after we've graduated, we still owe. Because when you look at, if you came out of school in the 80s, you typically had a nine to ten percent interest on your student loans. Mm -hmm. the rule of seventy-two says what? If you actually have an interest every seven of, of seven point two, in ten years that is going to double, right. right? So can you imagine a person going to school in the eighties? That loan has actually quadrupled. Quadrupled in, in cost, yeah. Yes, in terms of the interest associated with that, right? Mm -hmm. One of the companies, Navient uh has actually you know being sued they were trying to get out but they actually uh had contests mm -hmm. where people who were calling in to get their student loan information mm -hmm. that service and company had contests to see how quickly we can get these people off the phone mm -hmm. so when you're calling in to say can you please tell me i'm trying to you know find out about they were running contests like, you know, okay, hey, you were able to get them off the phone in five seconds. You were able to get them out. You're the winner. Now, what kind of egregious behavior is that when you have a student loan servicer who actually should be telling you what is actually going on with your student loans? We've right. actually had all of this conversation about what's happening now, and we haven't even touched on, you know, <laughs> a person and what they need to do. I'm going to come to that. Okay. So, with what's happening now is just think about it like this you've been out of school over 20 years you had an undergrad loan mm -hmm. they're now going back and they're saying you know we're actually looking to count and that's why they're saying we're going to do it this fall because the the process is that your loans have to be under the department of education okay now some people, uh, and what actually is also very, very important for us to understand is that um, in the uh, 80s going into the 90s, the Department of Education actually opened up student loans to actually be controlled by the banks. The banks were actually able to get in and make money off the interest on student loans, okay? Mm -hmm. And so even though it was a uh, government student loan, the bank actually was the one that actually got in and said, okay, we got the interest. Now, mm -hmm. in 2010, Obama came in and he said, I'm trying to actually address the student loan issue. If we pull the student loans back under the Department of Education, we can save $68 billion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what happened is that when they pulled the loans back under the Department of Education, two things happened that were really, really rough. Okay. The first thing was that 
colleges said, now that the government is on the hook, we can charge more. And so you started to see this uptick with how much colleges were cost charging. Right. Okay. And so undergrad, you're typically getting five to $6,000 in a Pell Grant. And you ask, I mean, in terms of your Pell Grant is, is conditional upon your, your income. Right. But the other thing is that the maximum that you could actually get was between five and $6,000 in a student loan. Okay. From the department of education. Right. So what happened is that a lot of private loans were taken out and colleges were charging more, but the Department of Education became the largest commercial loan lender in the company in the country. Okay. Okay. So what I'm, what I'm saying is basically that people actually have to, first of all, understand where are my student loans? Okay. And they can go to the website to find out where they are. Yes. Okay. And if they've been out for a while, they need to actually set up an account under studentaid.gov. And under that social security number, they actually will be able to take a look at these student loans. Okay. The second thing that's very key and critical is that if you find that your loans are with some private company or with some bank somewhere, Mm -hmm. You have the ability to do a debt consolidation under the Department of Education and get your loans consolidated. Okay. That's the only way that you're actually going to be considered for this major level of forgiveness and cancellation. Okay. okay? So in this fall, when they actually begin counting, 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 you want your number to actually add up to how much? How many months? 240. Bam. There you go. Okay. 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 All, right. All right. And so, and so in that, and we're speaking strictly undergrad. So mm -hmm. they actually calculate all of your numbers and say, they come up with your numbers similar to the situation with Andrea. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've got 225 credits now under the department of education mm -hmm. and you have to be in an income driven repayment plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that's mm -hmm. another slice of the pie, which basically says that, you know, I'm making so much, I'm recertifying every year and mm -hmm. my payments are going to be, you know, nine times out of 10 less than mm -hmm. what I would have to pay if I had to pay it straight away. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's actually finding out what you got, right? making sure that all of your loans, you actually have a handle on, whether it's mm -hmm. private and or under the department of education. If okay. you have private loans that are out there and or loans that are actually with some bank somewhere, mm -hmm. get those loans consolidated okay. under the Department of Education, mm -hmm. right? So that you can actually be considered for forgiveness. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. The other thing is that once that actually happens, and again, going back to the scenario we talked about earlier. So if it is that you actually have 225 as far as a number, towards your forgiveness, that you already are very clear on how many more payments I've got to make another 15 payments and I, my loan should actually be forgiven. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're looking at. So, so you're answering some of the questions that are in the chat, but let me, let me just be, make sure I'm clear on this. Okay. Um, so one of the questions was, um, I'll put it up. Why aren't, um, private student loans, combined with the federal loans and you're saying that they can be combined or is that a different question? Okay. So let's see, why aren't private student loans through Navient combined with federal? Okay, great. Primarily because think about it, everybody's journey in school was different. Okay. So look at the calculation. If it is that you are actually able to get the maximum student loan under the department of education, so say college is, was. I'm, I'm sorry. Is, is the Department of Education considered federal? That's. One yes. Okay. All right. Department okay. of Education is considered federal. So say tuition was twenty thousand dollars, and I'm just using this as a scenario. Okay. Mm -hmm. Twenty thousand dollars. They gave you ten thousand in a Pell Grant. Mm -hmm. You got five thousand in a student loan. Mm -hmm. So you got the max for a federal student loan. Gotcha. 
and then you actually knew you had a five thousand dollar gap so what do you do you end up taking out private loan a five thousand dollar private loan right in order to pay for your tuition mm -hmm. everybody's journey is different right. but if you have private loans um private loans are also being rolled into an entire debt consolidation mm -hmm. okay and this is as per Navient, who is actually one of the loan servicers who tends to actually have a really good handle on this entire process so at the point that you are actually looking to do a debt consolidation with all mm -hmm. of your student loans my recommendation is to actually tell them that you want to do a debt consolidation under nailnet under what? Nailnet. Nailnet is a loan servicing company. Oh, Nailnet. Okay. Because right. that's okay. one of the other questions that they were told by Na Navient. I'll put that question up. They were told by Navient that if they consolidate um, the monies, I guess the private with the federal, that the forgiveness would start all over again. So they shouldn't consolidate. Um, so you're saying that that's that the way to get around that is to go through nail net well nail, yeah nail net is one of the servicing companies now keep in mind one of the things that makes this extremely confusing and mm -hmm. i've been on the line with some of the customer service representatives who are answering these phones okay if the loan servicing was horrible over all of these years and these same people are employed mm -hmm. okay you're still not getting the most accurate information okay now um studentaid.gov the website studentaid.gov okay okay mm -hmm. one of the things that people need to do is that they need to look at the announcement of april 19th 2022 okay because that announcement outlines what's going to happen okay and when we're talking about what's going to happen it speaks about public student loan forgiveness it also speaks about what's happening with income driven repayment plans and the fact that the loans are actually going to be considered for those credits this fall okay does that make sense mm -hmm. okay and so when you look at why is that so important because all of this is being cleaned up behind the scenes everything that i've actually shared with you today is saying these are some of the avenues that you can take advantage of to get your loan forgiven and if you just happen to actually not be eligible for any of those plans, you're actually going to have, under the debt consolidation plan, your loans actually considered, because again, they're counting deferments, they're counting forbearance, they're counting payments, and as far as it actually starting all over again, your loan history is your loan history. Gotcha. So, so that loan his history has to be 240 months. In an undergrad. If it's an undergrad, a, right. If it's and graduate, it, then what is that? Graduate, the, the magic number is 300. 300, okay. Okay, primarily because they actually gave more in student loans for graduate studies, mm -hmm. okay? And so that magic number is actually 300 if you have grad loans, right? Okay. Does mm -hmm. that 300 months include the 240 of undergraduate work? Yes, well, okay, so when you have a student loan that's in an undergrad, that is considered like a, a direct subsidized, okay. okay? Something that's actually on the grad level is actually considered a direct unsubsidized loan, but still under the Department of Education, okay. okay? If anything that I want everyone to get from this today okay. is that you have to go in, take a look at what you have. There is a reconciliation process that I encourage all my clients to do. That is call your college or the colleges that you went to ask for an itemized statement of your uh, uh, billing from the business department since you attended that school. 
-hmm. On there, you're going to see where they say you actually had your student loan, uh, student aid payment, you know, Department of Education or wherever that came from is actually been applied to your student loans, right? I've got clients that have actually seen anywhere between a $4,200 to $20,000 discrepancy on what happened when they were in college versus them trying to reconcile, this is what my student loan thing is actually saying. Because keep in mind, if it is that the loan servicers were you know, just getting free money from the government because they were servicing the loans and the Department of Education didn't necessarily have the manpower to do that, then there could be, you know, human error associated with what you have in student loan debt. Right. So right now it's a 20, 30 year reconciliation that we're actually going through to make sure that everything that you actually did when you was in college, which was the original debt, is actually directly in uh, uh, conjunction with what you actually have and what you've been paying. Okay. And that's why one of the things is that the unpaid refund piece, the discharge, when you find that type of discrepancy, then you can say, wait a minute, this doesn't add up. This was duplicated. Okay. Now those you know, pieces are actually being considered for discharge. So we've got work to do. Clara, we've got work to do. And when I tell you getting in front of this maze for me right now is one of the greatest things that we have the opportunity to do since the civil rights movement. And I kid you not, on an economic level, I'm, I'm, I'm actually blowing this thing up primarily because I know what that forgiveness is actually going to do in terms of relieving stress, right? Mm -hmm. So is there, is there, um, there are a couple other questions before we, we kind of wrap? Is there yes. a, a, a financial guideline? So is there something that says if you make over X dollars, um, you can't participate? you know, that it excludes you from participating in the process. You're saying in terms of the income driven repayment? No, let's say you're in an income driven repayment now. Is it, is there, is there a, a financial, like if you make um, $500,000, um, you can't participate either in the income, you know, the income program, or you can't participate in the, the debt elimination. Great question. So income driven repayment plan, right? Just think about it like this. The income driven repayment plan is an actual calculation. It's a standard calculation that says if you go on the income driven repayment plan, there are like four different types of income driven repayment. In 10 years, which is standard. You have a graduated plan, which basically is over 20 years, saying that every two years you have to recertify the income based is actually saying every year you certify, that's over a 20 year period for undergrad. So under income driven repayment, there are four different types of income driven repayment plans that you can mm -hmm. choose from, right? Mm -hmm. And once you do the calculation, that in and of itself also shows you, this is how much will actually be forgiven, you know, uh, in, that, in that space, right? Mm -hmm. Or again, you have the public, uh, uh, student loan forgiveness piece, which is actually connected to the nonprofit. So everyone's situation is going to be different. Now, mm -hmm. you know, to say if I make so much, you know, am I, you know, uh, able to get around this? You know, um, keep in mind, almost 60% of all student loans that are completely paid off are people who are making high money or high mm -hmm. earners, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a really a part of your responsibility to pay it off. However, you know, just think about the number of people who went right. three years and they ended up dropping out. So one, you don't have a degree that you can show a company. And the second thing, you still strapped with all the student loan debt. Mm -hmm. And a lot, of, you know, if you think about, again, the statistic earlier, if 20 years after we have been out of college as African-Americans, we still owe 95% of the debt all of what I actually shared, all of what's actually going on in, you know, get your loans under the Department of Education, get those into an income based repayment plan, make sure that you're in a position to be considered for all of what they're going to do in this one time reconciliation, because they are very clear 
that we have taken advantage of people who didn't know. Not only have we done that, but we've also put ourselves in a position where we have not serviced these people, you know, in terms of the people we hired to actually give them the right information. So 20, 30, 40 years after a lot of us have graduated from college, we're still strapped with this muzzle, this level of suffocation, this thing that we don't even want to look at on our credit report that is student loan debt, mm-hmm. right? So now they're trying to right the ship. And I honestly believe the reason why they're looking to do that this fall is because as all the pressure is actually on Biden to say this 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, they have been doing incredible work behind the scenes with the lawsuits, with everything that's actually been going on. This guy, Cordona and the Department of Education, they have been really, really knocking this thing out the blocks. You see what I'm saying? And so at the end of the day, you know, it's not on social media. (laughs) It ain't in the news, you know? And so people have to listen to programs like yours in order to find out what's going on. And we've got to share this information. Yeah. So um, I've seen something in Forbes that said that Biden canceled like 1.5 billion of student loan debt for borrowers. And you know, that you can still apply. And I think you make a valid point that people are not getting the information. So one, it's confusing and, and it's and it's overwhelming because there's so many different layers to it. And, um, you know, it's on a case by case basis, depending on what it is you have. But I'm just going to try to summarize a couple of things um, mm-hmm. for people to, to kind of take away. Um, one, they can always reach out to you and and your information um, is there so that they can do a you know a one-on-one with you about their particular situation. Um, two, they can go to studentaid.gov um, to to get started in the process. And the time is now to get started because you can't wait until the fall because in the fall it'll be done. They will have kind of you know put put everything together. But yes. who's eligible are people who have outstanding, if I understand you correctly, have outstanding student loan debt, um, whether they took it out on behalf of their children um, or on behalf of themselves. And that debt has been sitting out there for 240 months if they're undergrad and 300 months if they're in graduate school. Is that accurate? That is correct, yes. Okay. And then there are all these subcategories. So if you're disabled, if you um, had death associated with it, or death of yourself, a parent, or death of the college. Yes. <laughs> the college. The death of the college. The death of the college. That, that the college is away. That's yes. a, Those are automatic wipes, right? Yes. Those are uh-huh. automatic wipes. Um, if you're in that lawsuit, and you can go to studentaid.gov to see if you're part of the class action suit. That's an automatic white. And um, there was another category, the four. Yeah, so you, you have, you, of course, your uh, public service, yeah. loan forgiveness oh. with the teachers and, or nonprofits, right? You right, also, the teachers. Yeah. yeah, and then also the colleges that uh, basically were false advertising. The false advertising people, yeah. yeah. The people who yeah. said, we're going to give you X, Y, and Z, Q if you come to our college. and they didn't fulfill in those prophecies. Those those are automatic ways. It's a lot of information. So the other thing I heard you say is that you need to get into the income consolidated debt repayment program if you're not already in it. So that might be part of the steps that you have to do before you, the consolidation before you have to get to uh, the the elimination portion. So if you're not already participating in that, you want to get that, get that going. Um, Yes, and I want I want to go back to Andrea's question. Uh If she goes and she looks at the announcement Mm -hmm. on August, I mean April the the nineteenth. See, the thing is, is that we've actually got to make sure that we have the tools Mm -hmm. when we're talking to these loan servicing people. Mm -hmm. Okay, for her to actually say it starts all over again, you know, when you look in the what does the income driven repayment or the public service loan forgiveness 
what are they actually doing? It speaks about a one-time reconciliation that's happening this fall. But you have to be have either your loans under the Department of Education, making sure all of your loans, whether they're direct subsidized or direct unsubsidized, they have to be under the Department of Education. And so for us, a lot of scripting and scraping trying to get through school, we first of all have to harness our loans. Where are our loans, right? Mm -hmm. I had a meeting with a client um, a couple of days ago. She had 32 different student loans in mm -hmm. all of the years that she went to school. So now we have to reconcile and we have to compare that against the three colleges that she went to, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, we're uncovering the truth that has actually been hidden under our financial wellness for all these years, right? Because we didn't really know, didn't have strategies in how to deal with this stuff. But right. the Department of Education and, you know, Cordona, so, and they're trying to help. They're right. trying to get this thing put it, up. put it all together under the Department of Education. If you can. Yes. All these places. Got yes. It. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah. yes. So just think about it. I mean, I, and I know we got to wrap up, but just think about it. There are millions of people who've actually passed that threshold that actually still are carrying that debt. And I honestly believe that they're trying to actually hit all of these spots before they announce this, you know, this, this uh, one-time reconciliation and how that could, and I know that the reason why, because think about it, September, the moratorium's over. September, they have the right to say, everybody got to start back paying their student loans right? We're mm -hmm. July 2022nd. So if you can get in front of it now, get in front of it, right? Mm -hmm. Start doing your homework. So you can say, look, you know, I, I got mine. I know this is what it is. And I ain't got to actually depend on somebody talking about what it's supposed to be. The other thing I think is that this fall, what do we have happening? We got midterms. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if they're actually pushing to get all of this stuff in a position to help us, and then we don't turn out for the election and the power changes, all of the stuff can actually change overnight as well. Yeah. So while we have an opportunity to take advantage of this as a people, let's do our homework. Yeah. Let's roll yeah. up our sleeves, get in that closet, <laughs> get that dust off them files and find out what's going on. So don't let a student loan servicer tell you something that's different from what you see in writing under the Department of Education website. Mm -hmm. equip yourself and arm yourself with the truth because right. this is a moving target and it has been all of the stuff that I talked to you about wasn't even in existence when I did this in April of 2021 all of these have been moves that they made quietly to actually help relieve the debt because they can't just go and say we're going to forgive all the debt because a lot of doctors, attorneys, these people saying look I paid mine but you were making the money to pay it Right. A lot of people that have kind of, you know, fell to the cracks. And then the other thing, which is really important, is look at what's happening in the divide now between the have and have nots. The wealth gap is really shot out the ceiling. And inflation is also, can you imagine if people are already having a hard time making it, what is going to happen when you actually are now put back under the gun to pay these student loans? Mm -hmm. Are you going to go back into default? 30 some odd percent, 30 some odd percent of people are in default. With student loans, mm -hmm. and they're trying to clean it up. We got to do the homework. We got to get at. It. Yeah. We got to share this information. That piece that you said about now you can get an attorney and put it, you know, put that debt also in your your bankruptcy. Um, that's huge too, because you, before you couldn't do that. So yes. there is a. I, I guess what I'm taking away from this one: there's a very very short window. We are in July. Yes, we are. You have a month, basically, to get it together. So you want to go to studentaid.gov. You want to consolidate. You want to get into the income-based um, payback. Pay you want to consolidate your um, your private, your federal, all in, under the Department of Education. You want to get a counselor to help you work through um, the process. You can also reach out to um, Mr. Wilson, if you're still unclear about how to move forward um, in the process, and you want to be in a position so that 
that debt can be that debt can be um, discharged. You won't be paying taxes on that debt discharge, which is huge. And this is a one-time opportunity, and it takes a minute, right? If you yes. have, if you have a lot of student loans or you've gone to different places, it might take you a minute to pull all this information together. So you've got about thirty days to get it together, and and get your blessing. You got to do some work though. Like yes, you have about thirty days to get your blessing on this and to get your questions answer so um i'm not seeing any more i can't see my questions on the other side any more questions in the chat but you can definitely reach out to mr wilson um to assist you and move forward go to www.studentaid.gov this is not a hoax they are wiping student loan debt they are discharging it meaning you do not have to pay it back it is gone forever goodbye um whatever so um uh andrea saying thank you this was informative she's going to contact mailnet today uh there is another question uh does this work for plus loans yes so the parent plus loans there is an option under the direct debt consolidation as well so again now if you're doing a direct debt consolidation you have the ability to choose which loan servicer you want that to be under. Nailnet has a direct debt loan consolidation department. Okay. So if that is something that, you know, you actually are considering or are looking to do, then, you know, that could, direct consolidation can be done under Nailnet. And in my piece, they're one of the few companies that actually has that specific department that is well educated on the direct debt consolidation as well as their agents pretty savvy on process now keep in mind all of this is still a moving target so you know as the department of education is continuing to try and reconcile and clean this up you know they're putting information forward and you know if you actually you know even google student loan forgiveness cancellation you're going to see where of course the part with you know the anybody that attended 105 of those corinthian schools all of their loan is forgiven i think that was you know well over six billion dollars that was forgiven just in that false suite you look at over 400,000 people that had disabilities that their loans were forgiven people that were under the suit and borrowers you know defense act all of that the question is we cannot be sitting back waiting on a check we can get up and get this stuff done on our own we got some stuff to do it's just like it's interesting because I, I reflect upon in exodus when moses was actually at the red sea and the egyptians were coming okay moses was saying all of what you actually see you know it ain't gonna happen and all the time he's got I, in my mind i'm looking he was looking up to god like you need to do something and god actually said take your rod and put that rod out over that, that red one. sea and yeah. get to walk it. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've got to do something. We've actually got to do something. We've actually been on our knees praying about this thing. And mm-hmm. right now, our work needs to take place in order for us to actually help ourselves get to financial freedom. Yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm, I am, you know what, I was really blown away. I was talking to a client and I mentioned um, we were gonna be having this conversation today and they were saying how this was their blessing. Like this was right on time. They've been struggling with student loan debt for um, a minute. You know, they've been struggling with student loan debt for a minute and the fact that um, there's an opportunity right now. Yes. You know, if you do the work, you know, let's say work faith without works is dead there you go that's right (laughs) you gotta gotta do so go to student aid gov um you may be in one of the special categories those are easy easy discharge easy wipes or you may need to do some more work um to get there but you've got about 30 days to get it done you know to go to studentaid.gov reach out to mr wilson um and 
take advantage of this blessing because this is a one-time shot. Yes. It's a one-time shot. And um, yeah, it's a one-time shot. So that's that's all I'll say. Um, do what you need to do. If you're confused about something, you know, there are people who will help you, who will walk you through uh, this process. So don't be discouraged. <laughs> Sometimes I can get overwhelmed, especially it's a lot of information. And Mr. Wil yes. Wilson delves deep. Yes. <laughs> like, wait, yes. Wait, come back to this stuff. <laughs> yes, right. no, do this. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes. It, it is no easy walk, but it's a walk that we can make. Yes, it is All definitely right. a walk that we can make. So All I right. just want to thank those of you who tuned in um, today. <laughs> God says, what do you want me to do? Extend the staff. Amen. Got to do my part. Most definitely, Miss Ronnie. Everybody has to do their part. So do the work. I'm um, really happy that you came. Oh, can you talk a little bit about the sessions that you're going to be doing? Yes, yes, thank you. So one of the things that I'll be doing is I'll actually get you this information, but uh, uh, on um, August the 2nd and August the 4th, August the 2nd is at noon, I'll be doing the entire um, review of, you know, this whole thing and, and what we can do. This was a great conversation because it's like, we can actually talk to our people about this thing. It'll be a, a little bit broader in terms of what's actually going on with this moving target. And I'll be doing this at least every two weeks because on uh, August the 2nd, it's at noon. And for those people that are working and can't get away from lunch, I'm doing another one on August the 4th at 7 o'clock, okay? Uh, 7 p.m., right? For those people that, you know, can get off work and, you know, uh, get some collard greens, macaroni and cheese and some baked chicken and then sit down and actually find out what's going on. So for me, I, of course, Claire, you already know this is one of the, the hot buttons for me because mm -hmm. I'm actually seeing how people are actually in position to get this debt forgiven, canceled, and how much of a relief it has actually been, um, you know, to actually be in a position to attack it and address it. And I'll be looking to possibly do uh, seminars every two weeks up and until the point that they actually announce this is the date that we're actually starting the reconciliation and you know uh, at the same time following what Biden does do in terms of does he move forward with this ten thousand dollar commitment but at the same time I really really believe that uh, the Department of Education is actually trying to clean as much as possible before because when people say well what about mine what about mine you have the ability to take advantage of some of the programs that are already in existence. Awesome. awesome. Okay. Awesome. So, this so August the 2nd at noon and then August the 4th at 7 p.m. Yes. And um, you're also coming uh, to, oops, you're also coming to uh, speak to the real estate group and the community on the 22nd. We're going to be doing another session. Yes. Uh, in the evening, uh, that'll be on Zoom. So I'll be posting uh, information on on um, the Lions View Realty Facebook page and um, also out on Instagram. We need to get this message out, you know. So if you're eligible, um, if you fall into the category of student loan debt, which many of us do, and you've been paying it for a minute and it, and you just can't seem to get up from under it, this is your opportunity. It really yeah. is your opportunity to have that debt discharged, to have it white, to not have to pay taxes on that money. And there's some automatic whites, and then there's some whites that you're going to have to do a little bit more work. But it's worth it. In the yes. end, get your blessing, get your blessing, yes. get your blessing. So I want to thank um, Mr. Wilson. If you have uh, any additional questions, definitely reach out to him. Um, uh, Financial Fridays, you know, we're we're here to provide you with resource, resources, information, and tips that help your bottom line. And this is <laughs> this is definitely going to uh, help your bottom line. So I hope that you all receive something of value today. Uh, my name is Clara Lyons Devon, uh, and uh, Financial Fridays we stream live on Fridays at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time.
So you're welcome to come back and join us again next Friday. Uh, and until then, keep living your best, best life. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>